is a beautiful clutch of eggs. Oh, uh, I'm not, I'm not, whoa! Relax, mama! It's okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I am just gonna jump right into the day with collecting some eggs. You know, I tell you what, this time of year is so exciting. I love getting snake eggs. Let's see, you never know if it's gonna be good or bad. Oh my gosh! That is a good clutch right there. This is actually a diffused corn that's het for scaleless, and it's bred to a hypo diffused scaleless corn snake. This happens to be the male right there that is the father, and he is gorgeous. And I tell you what, this is a beautiful clutch of eggs. Oh, oh, come on, Mom. She was not happy about me taking her eggs, I guess. She wanted to take a little pop. I do see one little slugger in there, which, by the way, is the first slug of the year when it comes to colubrids. But hey, I'll take that because the rest of the eggs look good. This is the little slugger here. You can see it's real squishy and kind of oblong and not quite as white. The rest of the eggs look absolutely amazing, and Mama is really upset. It's okay, girl. Again, I take the shed out. What? It's... Whoa! Relax, mama. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take the shed out, because again, we use this as a marker. We'll get some water in here, get her kind of settled down, and hopefully in the next week or so, she'll be back on the food and we'll start to breed her again. But let's go ahead and see how many eggs are in this clutch, because it's a beauty. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 good eggs, and one slug. What a way to start the morning. We've got a handful of other colubrid clutches, and then I'm gonna go downstairs, talk with Kelsey, see if we have any python clutches. Oh my God, I love days like today. This next female is actually a blood that's het for scaleless, but is actually bred to another blood scaleless animal. So in theory, they should all be blood or diffused corns, and half of them should be scaleless. Oop, this doesn't look like nearly as good of a clutch, and that happens from time to time. As a matter of fact, last year, you guys remember, I had a lot of problems with fertility when it came to scaleless. This year, so far, it's been actually very good, but hey, that's gonna happen, and this girl just didn't lay a very good clutch at all. Ooh, that's a disaster. It looks like there's two or three good eggs and a whole bunch just slugs. We'll go ahead and get mama back in her cage, get her set up, get her some water, and then we'll take a look at this clutch here in a second. You know, it's never good when you see clutches like this, but trust me, that's part of breeding snakes, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't see. You know, oftentimes people just post all their successes, and they don't post clutches like this that are just kind of, oh, it's a disaster. All of these eggs here are just unbelievably bad. It looks like there's three good eggs right here, these three, and oh, they're all nasty too. Oh, I don't know what is all over these eggs, but they are gross as could be. And unfortunately, a lot of times when you have three good eggs and let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 bad eggs, a lot of times those three eggs don't make it because obviously there were some fertility issues. But I don't know. I would say this egg looks really good. This egg looks really good. That egg doesn't look that good. So we might get lucky and get a couple babies. Regardless, we're gonna still set them up and incubate them. But uh, hey, that's the ups and downs of breeding snakes. Let's hope this next clutch is a little bit better. This is actually just an Oka tea corn snake that's really beautiful beautiful. That's bred to another really beautiful Oka tea corn snake just for line breeding. And oh my gosh, it looks like an absolutely beautiful clutch. I needed a beautiful clutch after that last slug clutch. But like I said, that's the ups and downs of breeding snakes. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful those pearly whites are. Oh my gosh. And someone said this a long time ago to me. It's that snake breeders get addicted to the white eggs or whatever. The truth is the eggs are kind of an off-white to be honest with you. But nevertheless, mama looks really good. Again, I always make sure she doesn't have any eggs. I'll pull the shed out. Once again, we'll get water in with her. And for those of you that haven't followed, I always say this, we pull the water out a day or two before they lay their eggs. Because sometimes snakes, in particular colubrids, will lay their eggs in the water. So we don't want that to happen because all the eggs go bad that way. So we take the water out a couple days early. As soon as they lay, we put water back in. No harm, no foul. Regardless, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 eggs. 15 eggs, no slugs. That's more like it. All right, back up top, it looks like we actually have another blood red. It's kind of a blood red day, right? We've had three clutches of blood red corns, or what they call diffused corns. Again, this is a possible head scaleless. It's also bred to a hypo blood scaleless. So let's see, again, a beautiful clutch. I tell you what, I am so happy with the way the colubrid season has started. I mean, it's incredible. Trying to get this girl off is a little bit tricky. She looks really good. Again, doesn't look like she's got anything retained. Take this shed out, we'll get her some water. You can see the eggs are slightly dimpled, and that basically just means you can see how she pushed all of the sphagnum moss to one side so there's no moisture right here and you just get some dimpling in the eggs. That's nothing to really be concerned about. We'll get this in an incubator box and we'll put some moss on top of it like this and that should pop the eggs out really good. But regardless, 
beautiful clutch of eggs. Let's see how many. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 <laughs> eggs. Oh my gosh, 18 eggs. That is absolutely incredible. I tell you what, it has started to be a fantastic year. If it keeps up like this, man, it's gonna be incredible to see all these amazing babies hatch. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Again, just another 60 days or so, and we're gonna see all of these amazing babies crawling out. Oh my gosh. Okay, one or two more clutches of snakes, and then we're gonna go downstairs and check and see if there's any python eggs. Last clue clutch, and if you think that this ever gets old, you're wrong. I mean, I tell you what, I've been collecting snake eggs for most of my adult life, and I still love it to death. And take a look at this cheeky monkey right here. This, of course, is a Mexican black king snake. She's definitely a little bit thin. She's gonna need some food, but she'll be completely fine. Again, we'll get some water in with her. These guys will actually feed right away, so literally she can eat today, which is good. The corn snakes usually need to go through a shed seven to 10 days after they lay their eggs, they typically eat, but with king snakes, in particular Mexican black things, they'll literally eat today. So Eric will feed her a meal today, and uh, that should be really good, but let's see if she has some eggs in here. What? What is this all about? This is really strange. Oh, look, there's one egg hiding over here. So it looks like she just laid three eggs. That's a pretty big girl to only lay three eggs, but hey, that's the way it goes. And if you notice, this egg was kind of pushed off to the side and rolling around a little bit. And we'll just take this in a dark room and candle it. Make sure the embryo's up. I'm assuming that the embryo is going to be right there because I can see a little discoloration, but we'll still get it in a dark room. We'll get it set up and then make sure that the embryo's on top. But I hope that every day we'll be getting colubrid eggs for a while now. Let's go ahead, get these guys set up and head downstairs and hopefully there'll be some python eggs. And once I'm done collecting these eggs, colubrid eggs like corn snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, for the most part, incubated about 80 to 82 degrees. I've mentioned it before that we climate control this entire room to about 82 degrees. Just like right up here, where it is basically about 82 degrees. Now, colubrids can fluctuate a little bit more than python. All I have to do is put these guys right up on the shelf like this. And of course, we keep an eye on the temperature just to make sure it doesn't go up or down or whatever. But regardless, about 82 degrees means that most colubrids will hatch in about 60 days. Now, don't get me wrong, some colubrids take much longer to hatch, some clubers take much less, but overall it's about 60 days and we just throw them right up on the shelf, which is, just makes it really convenient. So with any luck, this entire shelf here will be taken up with eggs by the end of the summer. Sure enough, we have some python eggs down here. Actually, we're gonna start with the smaller pythons, much like we did in the past, and we're gonna go with Stimson's pythons. This girl, of course, just laid our first clutch of Stimson's. This is our second clutch of the year. It was only six eggs, so let's see if this girl does any better. What do you think? Go Ooh. ahead, it's all up to you. Oh, that's a much bigger clutch. It's a huge clutch. Oh my God, oh that's my good God. to see. Again, I didn't know if maybe Stimson's laid smaller oh, clutches because wow. we didn't have experience, but she, she looks, looks like she laid a clutch. Yeah, she looks like she <laughs> laid a clutch. So many of these animals, after they've laid, they almost don't look like they laid, but this, this girl definitely different. This is especially huge for what we've produced so far oh this year. Oh my gosh, yeah. Look at that clutch of eggs compared to this female. And you wonder, how did she fit them in there? Well, let's go ahead and see how many eggs are in there. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I think there's yep, fifteen there's, on yep, the bottom. Fifteen, yep. Fifteen eggs, not bad. Fifteen eggs. That means we have twenty-one Stimson's eggs. We've got one more female Stimson's to lay, and then a bunch of spotted. So uh, that's pretty good. But we have a couple clutches of ball pythons to pull as well. Woo. And the first clutch of ball pythons we're going to go ahead and pull is actually a pastel, and it's bred to. Uh, Pastel scaleless heads. Okay, so these could be super pastel scaleless heads and super pastels. Uh, so we do still work with the scaleless head and scaleless project, but we're really just not looking to produce the scaleless stuff because we don't want to breed stuff that's too high anymore. Not to mention, I'm not 100% sure about the viability of the scaleless stuff. I'm not sure, not saying there's anything wrong with it, but we do still produce the scaleless head stuff. So let's see what we have here. Oh, that's a nice clutch. Oh, she's really wrapped around him good, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, Mama, good job. And there's a little bitty slug down there. Oh my gosh, that's the tiniest little <laughs> slug egg I've ever seen. That's crazy. Oh my gosh, but the rest of the eggs look good. Let's see, what do we have? Two, three, four, five, six. Six good eggs, and uh, I don't even know if I want to call that a slug. That's probably more like a follicle that just somehow got a little calcium on it and passed because slugs are usually about the size of eggs, but nevertheless, good job, Mama. She looks good. Six beautiful eggs, one more clutch to go. And the next one, ironically enough, is the exact same breeding, a pastel to a pastel scale. It's literally one box over, so uh, it's kind of weird how that happens sometimes. I do see a couple slugs in here. Uh-oh. Oh, no. That's all right. It's okay. 
it's not that bad. There's uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like there's there's actually three perfect eggs, one little boob egg here, and three little slugs. That's the way it goes. You know, we couldn't go the entire year without having a slug. We did make it pretty good though, Kelsey. You did pretty oh, yeah. good. We got into clutch five or six without even one slug. So this one isn't too bad, but these are some really big beautiful eggs that's for sure so it looks good mama looks really healthy and really happy so that's really good so hey that's the way it goes four good eggs three slugs all in all a amazing day of pulling snake eggs colubrid wise stimson's wise and now ball python wise so keep up the good work kelsey i'll see you tomorrow with more eggs right i see you tomorrow <laughs> Super exciting here. I mean, this is just the time to be alive at BHB. All the stuff, we brought it up, we fed it, we locked it up, huh? Stuff starting to lay eggs. I'm super excited. They're gonna start popping out. I'm gonna have a ton of babies to take care of. I just can't wait. Job security, that's what I like to call it. And it's pretty cool because Nova and his girlfriend have gotten along so well recently. And just a little update, she is definitely puffing up. I'm seeing some advanced signs of gravidness, which means she's starting to get full of eggs. She's not a really big girl at all, but I think she's definitely ready. And it kind of looks like she's got some marbles in her. We're going to put a nest box in here pretty soon because she'll be able to dig and actually lay her eggs if she is gravid, which I think she is. Hatching little baby frills, oh my God, would that be incredible. I don't know what to think of this. Look at Lucy actually came away from her nest, which is back there, and she came down over to here. I honestly don't know really what to think about it, but I will say now that she's down here and spread out again, she doesn't look very full to me, which makes me think that she's gonna have infertile eggs. Every time she coils up, I'm like, oh, it looks good. Every time she spreads out, she looks a little flat. But again, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm overthinking things. Regardless, I don't know what Lucy is doing, but she is spread all over the place. Who knows, if she lays right there, I would actually be pleasantly surprised because it'd be much easier to get her over there because I have lots of room to get away from her. If she goes back over there, we're in trouble. Regardless, I am imagining that literally any day we could see eggs. I think it'll be anywhere from tomorrow till maybe a week from now we're gonna get eggs. So it is getting close. Tell you what guys, this is a pretty amazing day, isn't it? I mean, lots of snake eggs. Things are looking good here at the Reptarium. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog. Kind of someone, and I promise I'm going to see you tomorrow. <laughs>